Raise your hand if any of you have watched or read some of the Olympic competition that's been happening for the last 14 days. I just want to say, as Hoosiers, you should. If Indiana, the state of Indiana, was a country at the Olympics, in the medal standings, we would have taken 12th place. Indiana itself has won over 15 medals and six golds in Paris. The country of India only has six Olympic medals. Those six golds were won by Cole Hawker, Sarah Hildebrandt, Cole Deigert, Lily King, and Alex Shackwell. I'd like to speak specifically today about Cole Hawker. Cole Hawker is the Hoosier who hails from Carmel, Indiana. He attended none other than Cathedral High School, a Catholic high school in our archdiocese. As a coach of cross country and track, eight years ago I saw Cole Hawker as a freshman. And I saw him for four years dominate in cross country and track here in the IHSAA. And what Cole Hawker did in the 1500 meters in Olympics this past week will go down in Olympic history. So I'll set the stage for you. And by the way, Cole Hawker is not alone in the Americans on the podium for the 1500. Yerid was also on the podium. This is the first time since 1912 that two Americans medaled in the 1500. It's over 120 years since a Hoosier has won any medal in a race over a 400 meters. So when we talk about what a Hoosier did, it's a really big deal. So here's the stage. There were two individuals that were supposed to take first and second. Kerr from Great Britain and Ingebrigtsen from Norway. Now as a distance enthusiast, I have been following these two men for years. One of them was the last Olympic record holder and the other one was the world record holder. And all eyes were on Kerr and Ingebrigtsen. No one, no one was talking about Cole Hawker prior to the start of the 1500. And for anybody who watched the buildup for this event, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the 1500 meter in, in track, for those of you who have fond memories of gym class in high school and being forced to run the mile, this is what we're talking about. Four laps around the track is the 1500. All eyes were on Kerr and Ingebrigtsen, and all that Ingebrigtsen and, and Kerr did for days, and in, in fact, right before they got on the track, both of them were interviewed, and both of them were tearing each other down. Negativity, negativity, criticism, anger. The gun went off, and Inga Britson, the favored, took off, took the lead, and maintained the lead, hmm, all the way until the last 150. Cole Hawker took first place with a time of 3 minutes and 27 seconds. A new Olympic record. Cole Hawker, interviewed afterwards, said some pretty powerful things, which I think have a lot to do with our readings this Sunday. The sports commentator interviewing Cole Hawker said, distance running is not a place where the USA plays a big factor. What has changed in distance running in America? because you have been a part of this. Cole Hawker, very humbly, said, well, I think a lot of it is about believing. Believing in ourselves. Believing that we are part of the world's best. I think in distance, there's been a thought 
as Americans, well, these other guys, they're just way better than us. We don't stand a chance. And yet, we've learned that we are just as good as anyone out there. That belief is central because distance running is such a mental game. Every part of me knew it was possible because I believed. Let me say that again. I think it's a lot about believing, believing in ourselves, that we're part of the world's best. I think in distance, there's been a thought that, well, these other guys are just better than us. These Ethiopians, these Kenyans, they're the distance runners. We don't stand a chance. Well, we've learned that we're just as good as anybody else. And that belief is central because distance running is a mental game. And every part of me knew that this was possible and I believed. So what about yourself? What do you believe about yourself? If I gave you a piece of paper right now and I said, write down what you believe about yourself, what would you write down? What do you believe? Who do you believe you are? What plan do you believe God has for you? Do you believe there's only some people that are chosen by God, that it's only some people that are blessed? There's only some people that can do great things for God? There's only some families that God wants to bless? There's only some marriages that God wants to bless? When you look around to the person to your left or to the right, the family in front of you, the family behind you, do you believe that that family that they're just better than you? That you don't stand a chance? Because you see, my brothers and sisters, belief is central, not just to distance running, but also to the Christian life, because it's a mental game. If we listen to our first reading today from the book of Kings, this is chapter 19. Remember, always read scripture in its context. What happened in chapter 18 in 1 Kings? Oh yeah, the, this is the prophet Elijah. He's the only prophet alive. What did he do in chapter 18? He went to battle against the prophets of Baal. They built two altars, and Elijah said, hey, I want you to call down fire, and if your God is real, fire will come down. There were hundreds of prophets of Baal, and one little prophet named Elijah. These prophets of Baal danced around the altar. They slit themselves. They did all these crazy things, and nothing happened. Elijah poured water on top of his slaughtered cattle. He called upon God and fire came down and consumed the fire. Elijah then slayed the 450 prophets of Baal. And now, where is Elijah? Elijah goes out into the desert and listens specifically to what Elijah says. He prayed for death and said, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. I'm no better than my fathers. I'm no better than my fathers. How many of us believe that we're trapped because of the sins of our mom, our dad, our grandparents, our cultural situation? How many of us don't believe that great things can happen in our life because we compare ourselves to our relatives, to our friends, to our status? Because that is not what God wants for you. You see, my brothers and sisters, belief is so important. What happens in our gospel passage today? Jesus had just multiplied enough food to feed a crowd of 5,000 plus. And now he says, hey, I have come down from heaven. And what happens? The Jews, they stop believing. So they start murmuring. So much so that Jesus actually says, stop murmuring among yourselves. Stop disbelieving and start believing. What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your future? What do you believe about tomorrow? What do you believe that God can't do in your life? Now let's look at Ingebrigtsen and Kerr. What, it, what were Ingebrigtsen and Kerr doing just before they walked onto the track? Being negative, putting each other down, tearing each other apart. And what did they do? They listened to it. What did we hear in our second reading today? All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, 
must be removed. Be kind to one another and compassionate. Listen to the interviews of Cole Hawker. What will Cole Hawker say about running on a track with Ingerbritsen and Kerr that it was a blessing for him to run with such great athletes? He was blessing them. What did Kerr and Ingerbritsen ultimately do? They listened to the lies that were put in their head. You're bad. You can't do it. I'm better than you. And both of them got taken down by the negative talk that was in their heads and they stopped believing who they were. What about you and me in the spiritual life? What about us in our own lives? Have we stopped believing? So let's apply this to John chapter 6 in general. What happens to Christians when they stop believing the words of Jesus? What happens to Christians when they stop believing that when Jesus said, this is my body given up for you and this is my blood gives up for you, what happens when Christians stop believing that? What happens when Christians stop believing he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I'll raise him up in the last day? What happens to parish communities when that, when that happens? But also, let's look at the positive. What happens when parish communities begin to say, no, I do believe. I do believe in the true presence. I do want to receive him worthily. I want to make a holy hour. I want to go to daily mass. I want to waste time with he who loves me. What happens when Christians begin to say, God loves me so much that he died upon the cross. God loves me so much that he wants to enter into me. What happens to Christians? That belief changes them. Just as the belief of a fellow Hoosier, Cole Hawker, changed his life. And the same is true for every single one of us. Now, I know that many of you might already start, but the mind, your mind is already telling you, like, that's not possible, it's not possible for me. Father, that's a really great idea, but, like, I can't, I'm just myself. So now I want to talk about splits. So, as you know, I coach cross country and track. I am a nerd. So I have the splits from the race that took place in the 1500. Now, for those of you who don't understand what the split is, it's totally good. I'm just going to give you a quick course here. So in cross country or track, we, we like to, to watch our splits. So if you take the 1500, which is four laps around the track, you could look at it as like, what was my time each time I went around the track? And then I can find out what my pace was. The splits that I have here are actually where they were at at every 100 meters. Now, go back to the gym mile that you may have run. This is how most people run. The gun goes off and you, you, you do what? You, you just burst out of the gate, right? And that first lap, you're with your friends and you're running and you're, you're having a great time and second lap hits in and you're kind of like, oh, this is kind of terrible, but I think I might be able to make it. Third lap, you're like, dear Lord, I just want to die. And then on the fourth lap, you kind of walk it in and you're like, whew, did I make the grade? That's how most people run. For you ever heard anybody who's ever run a marathon? What happens to most people that run a marathon around mile 18, 19, or 20? They call it, it's called hitting the wall. Because they went out too fast, they die, and then they jog walk the rest, the next three or four miles. That is the most ineffective way to run, but that's how most people run. And in fact, it's exactly how Inga Britson ran. And it's why he got beat. I coach my athletes again and again. It's called negative splitting or subsplitting. No one wants to do it because it's a mental game. Cole Hawker won Olympic gold because he negative split the race. The data is all there. Cole Hawker was in ninth place at lap one. Cole Hawker did not take first place until the last 100 meters. And in fact, his last 100 meter split was 13 seconds flat, which was his fastest 100 meter split out of the whole race. Ingebrigtsen, the favored, what was his fastest 100? His first. Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. The last will be first. And the first will be last. Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, the last will be first and the first will be last, is exactly what happened in the life of Cole Hawker, 
who won Olympic gold. But I just want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, the same is true for you. Because I'm going to tell you that you just finished your first lap. And it was your slowest lap. Because God isn't done with you. Because God has a plan for you. And if and when you choose to believe, the impossible is possible. And God can do amazing things. And you're not your yesterday. You're not what happened just a few moments ago. You're not what happened this morning at your house. You're not the sins of your fathers. What if, what if Cole Hawker believed after his first lap that that was the end of the race? But that's not what he believed. What did he believe? Well, as soon as Cole Hawker crossed the finish line and realized that he had won, he ran over to the side. He grabbed his American flag from the cheering crowd. He held it above his arms. He wrapped it around his shoulders. And after triumphantly running around the track, a microphone was put in Cole Hawker's face. And what did Cole Hawker say? He said, I let God carry me to the finish line. Do you believe that? That God wants to carry you to the finish line? That the lap that you just finished is not your fastest lap, but that you can keep going? That God has more for you? I think it's a lot about believing Believing in ourselves, that we're part of God's best. I think there's been a lot of thoughts. Well, those people are, they're just better than us. We don't stand a chance. And yet now we've learned that we're just as good as everyone else out there. And that belief is central to Christian living because it's a mental game. I won because every part of me knew this was possible because I believed. Let's pray for an increase in belief, an increase in faith in the Eucharist, in his body and blood given for us, in ourselves, in our church, in our parish, in our families, in our marriages, in our lives. And may we realize we've just finished the first lap. And there's many more to go and many more blessings.